Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Well, what have we here? Uh, it's a podcast. Fine. And what excitement we have today. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. <laughs> Um, where have you been? Wow, <laughs> you're so much louder now. Uh, anyway, welcome to the Mike O'Mara Show. Delighted to have you along on a uh, Monday. Uh, there you go. Are you playing the music a little bit there? Yeah, yeah, it's there. Hey, everybody. Uh, how was your week? You, anyway. It's uh, great to have you along. It's been, uh, these are interesting times, Rob Spiewak. Mm -hmm. They certainly are. And if anyone doubted that Facebook is on the way out, uh, certainly seems to have some action this week. Yeah, I look, um, a lot going on. A lot of people are tuning in today to uh, hear what's going on. And uh, seriously, to all of our listeners who have reached out uh, with concern, with a little love, with a little hate or simple curiosity, I am uh, I'm here to say thank you. It really makes you know how important this show is to a lot of people when there is a change and when there's upheaval. Um, the first thing I want to clear up as far as everybody is concerned is uh, – the events of uh, the middle of last week were not an April Fool's joke. No, I uh, I believe that April Fool's jokes uh, have to be crafted uh, in a much better way. That would be far too simple, an April Fool's joke. It's real. It's real, and it's, uh, it's a very sad time for us, and it's uh, always difficult when you have uh, change. That change, for those of you that might not have heard it, and there are people that don't linger online that might not know what's going on, but the bottom line is that Oscar has decided he no longer wants to uh, participate in the show. And as I posted online, if you didn't see it, Rob and I will continue to uh, bring you the show. We will. And uh, we will uh, plan uh, initially to have a number of regulars and guests that will be popping in periodically. We don't have a timetable for it, but uh, that's the way we're going to do it initially. Now, when change happens, you never know exactly what the future will hold, but you do find out your motivations. And I, more than ever, really, I want to continue doing this show. And this show is, it's a huge part of my life and it's a big part of Rob's life as well and it continues because coming in here even when I've gone through what I've gone through last week and uh, it is part of who I am it's part of what we do and I love doing it and I especially have loved the podcast format much more believe it or not than I loved radio radio was I always tell people I love it when the microphones are open and I I hate everything behind the scenes. That hasn't really changed that that much. I don't like anything behind the scenes. And once again, it's a difficulty behind the scenes that's resulted in where we are today. And uh you know, it is part of my DNA. I I really love the opportunity to come in and the privilege to talk to you guys every day. I really do. Um now as for why Oscar has decided to leave, and I never read off of notes unless it's a really, really heavy situation. So I've got my... You could have at least put it on your prompter, Mike. No, I didn't want to do that. Um, the reason he's decided to leave the show, if I speculated on that in totality, it would be uh, my opinion. Um, since Oscar made uh, the decision to leave, there has been contact. I have reached out. He has reached out. And um, I am firmly of the belief, and I think you were copied on the uh, email as well, that uh, that's a final decision, and I respect that. And I 
consider the decision to be a mutual one. And I think that is, while adequate as an explanation, it still means that when you've had a relationship with somebody, and as I wrote uh, Oscar in an email, to me, it's not the business nearly as much as it's the uh, relationships. And that's the... This is what you've said to your wives in the past, isn't it? You know, I was really hoping... Let me turn my air conditioner off. <laughs> Honey? I'm, I'm taking this opportunity to <laughs> gather my wind. Literally. Well, we want it to be a nice, cool Tom Peach for you in there. Oh, it's like freezing. Oh, you want it to be warmer because you're in Florida. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah, it, it, look, it is... Uh, it is. It's about the relationships ultimately. Yeah, and that's what's the that's the the tough part. And it's about also disagreements. Disagreements on uh on a few things that frustrated me, frustrated Oscar, and I get it and I respect it. And um, you know, the only person who has the definitive answer uh to that question, any indicated that to us yesterday uh is oscar and i'm not going to speak for him right um i can only speak for myself and as far as i am concerned um that is the final word on moving forward we have both communicated that uh we are moving on and so the show will continue with rob which i am delighted about because we will be rob and i Obviously, uh, some of you have read online, the day this all went down was Rob and my, are you ready for this? Yes. 32nd anniversary. It's all about timing, isn't it? 32nd <laughs> anniversary. 32 years together, yeah. Which makes me both happy and sad at the same time. Well, why sad? No, I forget it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm just it making sure I've got this. more ambivalent than I've ever been. Um. Let me answer some of the questions. Please, uh, please do. Was this expected on my end? Um, I answer that by saying not really. But at the same time, uh, things have been tough for the business side of the show for the better part of the last year. Um, but I was a bit surprised by the events of last week. Was this totally unexpected? No. Real super P1 listeners of the show could probably hear that everything was not 100% okay. The biggest difference for me is this is what I do. I am not involved in anything else. This is what I do every day. This is the most important business enterprise to me every day. That hasn't changed for, what are we coming up on? We're 14 years in? Is that what yeah, it is? That's right. 14 years? And so that is the way it is. And there are distractions that come up when somebody's got uh, another full-time gig. I, I get that. I get that. And I, I look, a lot of people said on, uh, online, you know, uh, will there be thank yous? Of course there are thank yous for the relationship and for the time spent with Oscar. Um, you know, I'm disappointed. I, I, I love it, uh, when the business side of things goes smoothly, but ultimately working collaboratively is about the relationships, the one-on-one -on -one with people. And when that goes sideways, it feels awful. I'd be lying if I didn't say it didn't feel awful. It's different than other relationships that have come and gone, and there have been many. And the nature of this business means that there will be upheaval. You can't, you can't watch anything about broadcasting. It, 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 lucky is the individual in this business, from movies to television, well, movies are great because you do it and then you leave. But right. for broadcasting in particular, it's the nature of the biz. And and things change occasionally. And the, the thing that makes this difficult is, no, it did not end uh, well. And it did not end 
uh, smoothly. It ended abruptly. And I'm not happy about that for the listeners too, because when things can be transitioned and when things can go smoothly, um, it makes it easier for everybody, including the listeners. And for that, I apologize. I, but I also do not have any regrets, uh, moving forward. I really don't. I can't, I can't tell you enough how much, uh, doing this means to me and that I want to continue. That was uh, never a question, but it was reinforced by the events of last week. Uh, I am disappointed. Uh, it feels awful. Um, will I divulge the conversations leading up to the decision that Oscar made? No, those are not for you. And I know a lot of people are probably, Rob, out there, uh, you know, hanging on uh, me to dish dirt and oh, to I know say there this, was this, this. There was a thread that had somehow in their mind, there was some tremendous blowout argument that we had recorded. And they said, we'd love to no, hear the recording. I can say that. I None can say that nothing, nothing was recorded. We were not no. on the air. This was all pre-taping uh, of the show. That's, the, that's the way that happened. I love they have it all figured out. Yeah. <laughs> like um, that. And, 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 and listen, and Rob was not even part of the uh, discussion. I had a personal conversation and... You know, I, I'm not going to go into the details of that because that is not the one thing I've always thought about breaking up with a partner. If I were to come in here and throw shade on people I have worked with, what does that say about me? I'm the one that uh, had the relationship. I'm right. the one that was with this person. Were there good times? There were phenomenal times, great times, lots of laughs. I, I I think that um, throwing shade on someone you have worked with for a long time is, this is my personal opinion here, totally without character. It just is petty. It is something where you're trying to make yourself feel better and you're not going to feel better because it hurts. And Rob, you may be right that I do indeed have a track record with that. And, you know. No, no, I, I, I was, I was honest with, with my, I mean, in my personal life. Yeah. I said but, that in my personal life as well. When you move on, you move on. And if you, and everybody at a certain point, at least I, I look at it this way has to eat the S sandwich. Yeah. And I have, I take full responsibility, uh, in my role. I don't care if people, you know, want to throw insults at me and they're hurtful. So congratulations if you did that. But at the same time, it's not my place to throw insults at another person because I don't want to, mm -hmm. because that to me diminishes me. Does that make any sense? That it diminishes does. me. It does make sense. Perfect sense. Um, on a show like ours, everybody's got their favorites. That's the way it works. People have, uh, you know, they, they always want to divide. They love the conflict. Yeah, I think that uh, the numbers for social media engagement would bear out that uh, people have popped back in to uh, see what's going on and see. And I also think that based on the kind of radio that we've done and the kind of podcasting we've done over the years, the track record would lend itself to a good radio war. I think back to some of the great radio wars that we were involved in. Mm -hmm. Some of them were real. Some of them were, you know. Manufactured. Ramped up, manufactured a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I have valued my relationship with uh, Oscar and Rob as much as any I've ever uh, had in my career. When someone moves on, uh, there are two things I've always found to be true. Uh, one, things will never be the same. It's like when you have a death in the family. It is. And it is. Uh, two, you carry on. What are you going to do? Roll, curl into a ball and just uh, start the, the upset is past. As far as I am concerned, the words, uh, that hurt they're in the past. And I look forward to moving on and, um, I will always have a, when you, when you, when a relationship ends and I'm, I'm trying to, put this the right way. Sometimes you feel screwed and sometimes you feel like maybe it's the right thing. And 
th- this is not a situation where I feel uh, taken advantage of, mm-hmm. where I feel blindsided, where I feel cheated. If that helps people out there to know that, uh, you know, I still have love in my heart for, for Oscar, for Shannon, for Mac. Uh, I should point out Mac is a Podville employee, so that's mm-hmm. uh, Oscar's decision as well. I, I really look forward to carrying on though. And I'm, uh, and you know, the issues that, that, uh, that you have had and I have had Rob with, uh, with Oscar are issues that in my opinion should stay private. I I just don't think that you do anybody any good. And I, as I said, I'm, I'm sad, I'm angry, uh, but at the end of the day, when the decisions are final and you move on, you're like, okay, enough of the pity party for yourself. Uh, jump back in and get to it. Mm-hmm. And I really, really think that we uh, we live in a world that uh, if you avoid taking personal responsibility, uh, you're you're looking at me to point fingers at others. And if you avoid taking personal responsibility, that's another thing that shows lack of character. Mm-hmm. I take total total responsibility for everything that happens on this show. It is my call ultimately uh, as to how this show works and to how this show hits the air. And I like doing it and I like doing it collaboratively and that's never going to change. I will always, in my opinion, work collaboratively. Um, After my decision to go forward, uh, the responsibility continues to be mine. The important thing is not only do I want to continue doing the show, but there's a level of excitement that goes along with it. That is not in any way disparaging another person that worked on this show. What the excitement is that when change happens, you you have to, moving forward, at least I do, you have to look at it as kind of an opportunity. Yeah. But the difference between this relationship with Oscar And relationships I've had in the past is I have tremendous esteem for Oscar Santana. And I have tremendous gratitude for the help he has given us over the years doing this show, both on the air and off the air. Do we disagree? We disagreed all the time. We butted heads all the time. I like butted heads with lots of people, you know? Like brothers butt heads. That's the way I've always felt like it. And I don't know what the future holds for the relationship. Uh, the show, for those of you, oh, you guys should make nice. I don't know what's going to happen with uh, the future of this show other than we're moving forward with the show. And we have a plan for moving forward. And we developed that plan very, very quickly. And I would be lying if I told you that that eventuality was not in my mind at all. I thought that would be necessary at some point. I think that moving forward, uh, I get back to the point is you never know what's in someone's head. Mm -hmm. Uh, If I was to speculate on what's in someone else's head, I would be doing so without any basis other than my own opinions. And I don't think that's productive. I don't think it's productive. And I don't think it gets back to the whole thing about, you know, this is what I think. This is why he's not here. I don't know. Mm-hmm. That's his thing. And uh, it, is been, it has been a long relationship, one of the longest in my career. The longest in my career is sitting with me right now. <laughs> I know. Again, now I'm feeling sad. You shouldn't. <laughs> you, uh, you shouldn't. Um, I'm disappointed, grateful, humble. I'm looking forward with optimism. Lastly, to the listeners who reached out to me with your love and support. Um, and there were many of you, there really was, I was going to do a bit, Rob. Okay. And this might be because I've blocked people over the years. I was going to curate the hate. I was going to curate the hate. That sounds like a great name for a segment in kind of a mean tweets way. Yeah. And when you, when you are getting online and you're going through, first of all, it's tedious. Yes. Secondly, I couldn't find outside of one person 
uh-huh. who was really super mean to me, both publicly and privately. Was it Beth Ann? Uh, it was Beth Ann McBride. Yeah. Classic Beth Ann. I, I couldn't find real hate, deep hate. I mean, I know it's out there. I know there are people who say, sure. Mike, Mike should retire. Uh, Mike has been, uh, you know, driving the, the show into a ditch, but I, it wasn't, this is some advice to you haters out there. All right. If you want to get your hate on the show, please be a little meaner. I'd be a little more, I, I don't want to, I'm not trying to ramp you up, but if it's more venomous, if it's more vitriolic, uh, it, it would be better for the mean tweets and there was nothing in there that rose to the standard of jimmy kimmel's mean tweets uh, i see uh, well did you, you see know, anything out there you know um i saw mostly positive stuff and the stuff that was negative it was like worrying that you and i could move on and guys we've been doing this for 32 years together mm -hmm. i think we're gonna be okay i mean we've been through other co-hosts, other regulars, we we really do enjoying this, and we enjoy doing this with each other. Did you say we enjoy? Let's enjoy him. Let's enjoy him. Let's sit on him. Uh, but uh, it's I really appreciate all the concern. I appreciate the people that somehow found me to be in the middle. I don't know. I'm part of the show, guys. I was right in the. I was right in it. So I mean, I'm not as the delicate flower, perhaps that you. Uh, picture me to be i'm a more hearty flower i'm a mum. well you've been through a lot well yeah it's been a sucky year uh if you go back a year and year and a half but in any case um i found the people to be mostly positive i had many many people reach out i replied to none of them because it's not my place at this point to reply you selfish bastard i even blocked mike <laughs> I reached out to everybody uh, that I could that was sending uh, uh that's that's what I mean it was just there were so many really? things that were so sweet and kind and yeah. uh but there was also man one lady who will go name na nameless is it a name we would know Joni Okay you know the name uh the she, three I name person Oh I don't know the name I just thought that Horrible. she was she loves Chachi. I mean, it was mean. It was, yeah. and it hurt. I don't, I've never gotten on here and said that things don't hurt. They do, You're damn right. it. They hurt. And uh, if, I know that you and I both, when we get in, not anymore for me, but there was a time when I'd be in a particularly negative frame of mind when I'd go searching out the hurtful. And there's no good that comes from that. I do it too. We there's all, other, there's one it. site that'll make you oh. really realize Are how you much talking about the uh, FU site? Yeah, exactly. And I that's not, really what they oh, should I call can't, it. I can't do that. That's one I can't do. That, well, that it makes you realize like when the the, the royal families dealing with yeah. uh, British tabloids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I you know, they're human be we're human beings. It's tough to compartmentalize that when it's when it's uh, out there, but it is extraordinarily toxic. It is a phenomenon is. of the uh, of the internet. Amazingly, and I stopped doing it when I quit drinking and started seeing a therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I really, 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 really yeah. thank uh, people that, uh, you know, had nice things to say. And I thank people that have uh, opinions. It means people care. I really mm -hmm. do. Not yeah, the hate, hate, true. but the, the borderline true. hate, you know, like the yeah. Mike retire hate, which yeah. was a lot. You know, of uh, yeah. people. I ought to retire. Yeah, he ought to retire. I, I'm planning on retiring. I'm not doing this forever, but I'm not. I'm not retiring well, anytime then, soon. That's not what you said when I signed on. <laughs> Never. 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 Uh, what else? Let me see. I think I've covered. It. Do you have any questions for me, Rob? Any questions about going forward? I mean, I don't. I, I don't I have think any I've questions. covered it. I. I it's it, the. By the way. This type of statement is more difficult than if it was just coming in here and bitching. Yeah, true. If it was coming in here and bitching, it would be uh, selfish. It would be irresponsible. It would lack character. And I also, this is, this is the ABCs of me. For those of you that recognize that the show energy had a negativity to it, I take responsibility for that as well. Um, 
my negativity on the show happens uh, on the show, immediately before the show, and once in a blue moon, a little after the show. Yeah. Outside of that, I don't have a lot to deal with with uh, the people associated with the show. We move on. We try to put things behind us. Um, I do I have all, one question. Yeah, go I ahead. Do actually, um, you've talked about you know changes and moving forward, and some things we're going to introduce to the show that aren't the same. Can I have your word that the core of the show will stay the same? Yeah, the core think- of the show is the way the way we do this is the way we do it. Uh, mm-hmm. Bringing in a uh, and I don't uh, have any problem sharing this. Uh, we compiled a rather lengthy list of uh, people to pop in occasionally, yeah. and that'll be either paneling for the whole show or simply just coming in at the beginning I because the it. beginning yeah. is uh, what we call our monologue segment. That's the longest part of the show that we do. Um, and the support that I've gotten from uh, some people who will be nameless and people who won't be nameless and the people who will be nameless might not be nameless forever. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means. That's going to piss people off right there. I know. I What's want- he talking about? What's he talking about? I want that quote verbatim on Facebook and have people comment on it, please. Right, immediately. But Carla, thank you for your love and your support. And oh, she's so great. She I really am is. sure that uh, that Oscar is getting love and support from his beautiful wife, uh, Shannon, and for Mike McIntosh. Um, I'll probably reach out to Mac at a later time to, uh, you know, he's kind of, that is a guy that's kind of caught in, uh, yeah. you know, in this, but he's and a fragile flower. Yeah. But, but he's also, you know, an employee of the, of Podville and that's great. I'm, I'm happy for him. And I'm, I want everybody over there to, uh, to know that with all this happening, it, uh, it doesn't erase a track record. And no. I really, uh, that's, that's important for me to, to post, but uh everybody likes to talk about the the jerry dean situation uh you know a uh, reconciliation no that's that's i don't see that happening i don't i never ever Took them 20 years mike so let's check on this in 2044 it's 2044 when I... <laughs> when mike is in the to know you're hosting your telethon for i'll be like one the... of those the, those uh bodies that lies in the state that's preserved you know a lot of rouge um <laughs> Yeah, rouge on the cheeks. With, He'll come with all with of Mike. It. He'll reunite with you on your your telethon for over the hill podcasters. Yes. <laughs> He'll come I out. I am so uh <laughs> looking forward to it because it, it, and I'm not trying this is not being said to to have false bravado. But I know Rob feels the exact same way. It's true. Once the dust settles and once the decisions are made and once uh, once you make that uh, call that, okay, this is how we're going to do it, this is how we're going to move forward, y- y- you can't do what we do without having a level of excitement for it. Yeah. And it is something that, and, and you reflect a lot, and you think about recent months, and that is, thank God, it, would, it took a while, as you know, God. It took a while to get to that spot. Yeah. Uh, for most of the week, the end part of the week and the weekend, it was right here in my gut. It was this nasty oh. little uh, feeling that is that nobody likes uh, to have it. Oh, this is what I wanted to say. I hadn't had that feeling in like 15 years. I. These are the ABCs of me, ladies and gentlemen, because a lot of you uh, that, that uh, have problems with me have those problems because of the way I behave on this show towards my co-hosts. And I get that. Mm-hmm. I think that the nature of the speed of the show, it's kind of like watching a hockey game. And in the heat of battle, you throw punches occasionally. And then you move on. And you shake hands with the guy that you had the fight with, and you and you move on that. The conflict side, we also know that there's a value to that. When, uh, how often have I said to, to Rob, Rob, say something when, right. because you don't like that part of the world. You don't like right. conflict. You've gotten much better at it as the years have gone by, but there are people that, that dig that. There are people right now that are furious at me for yep. not throwing 
all the disrespect out there I possibly can. I'm not. Well, you can't I throw don't, something I, you don't have. I don't have it. Right. I don't have it. You wouldn't be working with somebody that long if uh, if you had it. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think that, that that's what people want. But for those of you that have heard me rant and rave, and I think that is a part of me, but it's not the big part of me. Right. The big part of me is happy that he has stabilized his life with a wonderful relationship with his daughters from a previous marriage, with a beautiful young son of 10 years old, with a wonderful wife who has stepped up under these circumstances because one of the things we realized that we needed to do was to take some of the complication out of this show and make it smaller. It's not going to change the show right. in any way, but that's part of it. And to have people support you, you know, it's hard. We supported each other during mm-hmm. this period of time, and we have to. If yeah. you want to move on, you have to do that. But that's the real me. That's the person that, and I don't want, to me, I've always felt this way. Hurting someone else, hurting someone else lingers with me longer than being hurt. Does that make sense? It if does. I'm it the, makes if I'm the sense. recipient of uh, things that hurt me, I can get over it a lot quicker than if I feel I've hurt somebody else. Yeah. And I know I think that it's a sign of maturity. I and think I think that is. there are hurt, uh, perhaps, I can't, as I can, I can't speak. I can, mm-hmm. uh, the only speculation I'll give you here is that I think there were uh, hurt feelings uh, on both sides. And that that feels like crap when sure. you're when you're dealing with that, but um, you move on, and it really is something that um, I'm over it, and I plan to get better and better with that. Mm-hmm. And when you said about going to a therapist, they give you strategies uh, they do. for moving. Uh, I have not been uh, seeing my therapist. I'll give you an example. All right. I have spoken to professionals in the past, and the professional that I spoke to, it was concerning my feeling of detachment up in the state of Maine. Okay. I remember. And yeah. this therapist looked me in the eye, one of the best moments I've ever had with anybody, and said, what are you striving for? What do you, what do you want? I say, she said, why are you chasing something you're not going to get? And I was like, what? Why are you pursuing people that it's never going to be like that? Why do you right. waste the energy? Why do you waste the time? And that, I think, applies in many, many situations. So valid. Very, right? very valid. Yeah, I feel does. that way. And that's my spiel. I, I kick the floor over to you if you wanted to say anything yeah, before things. we break. And then we will continue with the show. Uh, we've got a great round table today. We've got a great flip side today. And, uh, and of course we have to get right to that hot eclipse news, but I wanted to give Rob a chance cause I've been flapping my gums for the better part of, for, for the entire half hour. Go first, ahead. uh, first I got to say, I concur with everything that Mike said, and we didn't plan this. We just said yesterday, unacceptable. He said, Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> He's going to say some stuff, then I'm going to say some stuff. I agree with what Mike said. I concur that I owe a debt of gratitude to Oscar for being with us as long as he did. And I will always love the fact that I broadcasted next to him for 14 years. He had a different style than either Mike or I. Yep. Uh, very linear, great storyteller. And I learned a lot from that. So, Oscar, thank you for that and all that you've done for us. It's too, the list is too long. The reason that, and also, you know what? I I do have to thank Mike for when all this was going down, he immediately reached out to me and said, do you still want to be a part of this? I said, yes, of course. And the reason is this. Uh, I, in the past six months, have taken over doing the best of. Okay, rah, rah, rah. No one cares. But it allowed me to go back. Well, can I interrupt you and just say people do care because you've gotten really, really good reviews on it. and. Uh, that's not lost on me. I mean, I, I, I people, once you started your hosting duties on that, mm-hmm. show, uh, it was terrific, but go ahead. But like Mike, I don't look back a lot on what we've done. And I was listening to shows seven, six, seven, eight years ago. And there was an energy I've said on this show, uh, in a darker moment that I don't feel I'm as funny as I used to be. 
But when I what I heard back then was not any of us being more funny or less funny. It was an energy and a silliness and not being tied down to the world of, as they say, big business. Uh, Mike? <laughs> I don't think, is it a two shot? Because I don't know. We've got a new uh, recording system. So are people seeing me? Pick yeah, they're seeing, you. they're seeing you. I'm just calling attention. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm not interrupting. And, I, and when Mike called me and said, let's get back to simplicity. Love that. Let's get back to silliness. Love that. I think that at the heart of the show for many, many years and for all 32 years, I think anyone would tell you, Mike and I are silly people. And I, I don't want to simplify it to that, but it doesn't get much more. We like to laugh. We love to make each other laugh. We love to make you guys laugh. And In the I'm environment always, of yeah, Rob and Mike, I, I would picture you. I am not a regular churchgoer anymore, mm -hmm. but I believe in my adult life and in my life right now, the one person that I would have trouble sitting next to in a house of God would be mm -hmm. Rob Spiewak. And that kind of sums it up. You know? I'm not very well behaved. Yeah. Um, so I look forward to the next chapter. We've been through a lot of, I mean, you have to think that Mike and I started together in 1992. Mm -hmm. 1992 and one of my first extended periods of time from mike was driving him home after he had a bad bad event with his call it was colitis uh diverticulitis diverticulitis and i this had to back drive him in my 20s right 30s well 1992 so 33 i was 72 then That's right. Right. so i had to drive mike from fairfax to annapolis and it could have been horribly awkward and mm -hmm. I, I was a kid i was 21 right and guess what it wasn't it was yeah. just it's it was silly and mike was in great pain but he still <laughs> managed to laugh and buy me ribs but in so pain <laughs> your silliness while you are still in pain he asked me not to hit any bumps but I take great pride true. in these 32 years. <laughs> God, I, that, I gotta remember that like it was yesterday. I, that is so true about the bumps. I'm like, romp, romp, just watch out for the potholes. Cause it, I, cause it would hurt my gut when that yeah, I, I, I take great pride in these 32 years and I look forward to what is to come. People have reached out asking me, am I gonna be okay? Yeah, I'm gonna be okay. Um, I've been through stuff like this before. And it is, as Mike says, it's the nature of the business. The podcast itself is an organic living creature. Oh, let me jump in Thank and you. just say, hey, Steve no. Kelsey, take that PTSD thread down that website. Sorry. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I didn't I didn't stop by uh, it. The podcast is an organic living thing and it changes and it always has changed from day one. It's changed and it comes from another organic radio must be growing and changing. And I like to think of this as radio to survive. And here we are. We're going to survive. We're going to, and you're going to love it. You're going to love what we have in store. I'm thrilled for you. that I am at this age, at the age of 93, that I am so, I'm still uh, into doing this. Now, uh, even this in no way means that I am happy about the circumstances. But when you go through this crap, it, it validates your enthusiasm for the job because you come in and go, no, I want to do it. And I, and yeah. I think changes is, uh, is something that can be, uh, good. I'm sure, uh, that Oscar, I hope Oscar feels the same way that uh, mm -hmm. now he can, you know, devote all of his, uh, energy to his business. And I, I, I look this, I have to say it once again, this is different than other relationships I've had. Was there, was it tense and was there a uh, hurt at the end? Yeah. Yeah, there was, but that won't change the way I feel about him. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, that's the, that's the difference. That is a major difference. So for those of you that want me to, uh, you know, throw shade on somebody, I can't do it with somebody that I have no, you know, animosity towards. I yeah. really don't. Am I unhappy about the situation? Yeah. But Ditto, ditto, run. ditto, Mike. What yeah, you man. Saying? I mean, and where, where, you know, what, what down the, down the road, who knows? I, I know that I don't, uh, I don't feel like I have in other circumstances where I felt mm -hmm. really, really, uh, 
you know, betrayed. I that does that that word does not apply here. No, I does agree. Does not apply at all. So that's it. We uh we we yeah, yes, sir. One more thing. I interrupted you. I apologize. One more thing, and that is this. Um, there has been some concern online that there won't be uh, any more conflict on the show, and you dig the conflict. Well, I tell you what, conflict happens in real life. We're not going to manufacture it, but the conflicts will agree and uh, will remain because we're real people and we will have conflict. But Mike O'Mara has something to say. Anyone who is uh, concerned that there will not be conflict should be aware of uh, the guest list that we have put together. Yes. And not to mention, uh, you know, regulars to the show, but people close to us as well. To mix uh, it anyone up. That, any, any, anyone that's concerned about conflict will uh, know that uh, both Carla and Carrie have agreed to, on occasion, visit the show. If you like that, we will we will definitely billboard who's going to be on the show. Yes. You know when when we get into that. Right. This is this week. It's Rob and me. And but going forward, we'll let you know. You know? Yeah. As soon as I tell Carrie that Oscar's left. We're going to book her in and uh, make that happen. And we're all looking forward to that. Thank you. I appreciate that. We got the uh, round table coming up. And then later, I want to tell you what I was waiting to tell you last week before everything happened about yes. my kid. And it's oh, about yes. as good as it gets. Uh, we will take a short break and we will be back uh, with the round table right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whether you hydrate to live or live to hydrate, Liquid IV quenches your thirst faster than water alone. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, Liquid IV does it all in a single delicious stick. No sugar, no artificial sweeteners, non-GMO, and free from gluten. I hate that gluten. Dairy and soy. Try white peach, green grape, or my favorite, uh, lemon lime. Actually, I love them all, and you will too. I grab my Pizza Hut cup, and I'm off to the races. Uh, it's so good and so easy. However, however you hydrate, grab your Liquid IV, hydration multiplier, sugar-free, in bulk, nationwide, at Costco, or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use code TMO as a checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code TMOS at liquidiv.com. Hey, look. The Kraken chose to stay. Hey, I have a question for you. Please. Uh, you know, we do have an Oz behind the scenes uh, with this show right now. Yeah. And uh, what I uh, what I don't know is uh, because this person will be uh, anonymous right. uh, for the foreseeable future. Uh, how are we expected to know if everything is going swimmingly at the beginning part of the uh, show? What I imagine the, uh, he could send me a text and say everything's OK. That's awesome. Uh, that's good. Thank you, Rob. I'm are you listening, it. Oz? <laughs> Who rang that bell? <laughs> uh, let me uh, let me know if that goes okay. I uh, shall. All right, let's uh, let's begin the round table, ladies and gentlemen. My there fist is just in. It's all good. Uh, <laughs> there is no better way to celebrate today's total solar eclipse than with Pink Floyd's "The Dark Side of the Moon." Uh, imagine. Boo! Boo! Are you not a Pink Floyd fan? As someone who likes classic rock and oldies, I cannot bring myself to like. Pink Floyd. Never oh, been able to. There's a real reason I like Pink Floyd. I uh yeah. I, I like Pink Floyd because it was it was it was on in the Omera dorm on occasion for special moments. There you go. I'm guessing an LP. Thank you. Yes. Uh oh, of course, with me, stud. Imagine listening to the closing line and everything under the sun is in tune, but the sun is eclipsed by the moon as it's literally happening. This is crazy. All it takes is uh, just a little bit of timing to figure out what time to expect the eclipse in your location. Head over to NASA.com if you're wondering what I time you're going to be doing it. If you're using Spotify, you'll want to start the album 41 minutes and 53 seconds before the start of the eclipse. Great. Uh, 
For can example, I synchronize the Wizard of Oz to it as well? Yeah, you can do that. They mention that in this story. Oh, they uh, do? Okay. If you're in the Eastern time zone, you'll want to start the album at 2.32.21 p.m. The eclipse is expected to start at 3.14 plus 14 seconds p.m. Eastern yeah, time. I, I know that three o'clock is when News Channel Four is starting their live coverage of. Is this going to be? Uh, will I get it down here in Florida? Will you I get be, uh... not as much. I have your percentage, as a matter of fact. Give me a second. Like how dark it's going to get? Well, the percentage of coverage you're going to get. Like, coverage. You know, like you're not going to have the. You're not in the path of totality where the sun that is one hundred. Cool. That'd be a great name for a band. Good evening. We're the path of totality, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to have it's, you with uh, us. A sixty-five percent, Oz says. Okay, sixty-five percent uh, for yeah. Florida. Uh, if, covered, yeah. if you don't feel like listening, I don't care about the album anymore. It's worth mentioning that if you're playing the album on CD, this is so much detail about the album. Uh, um, the total runtime might be a little different, so you might want to double check. Uh, fine. I know what I'll be playing when the eclipse mm. happens, Mike, and I think this is more your scene anyway. Okay, let's listen. Cat Stevens. I'm being followed by a moon God, I hope that sounds shadow. better than it's sounding to me. All right, thank you. Uh, so moving right along, ladies and gentlemen, happy total solar eclipse day to commemorate the occasion. Ultimate classic rock put together a list of 12 movies that feature solar eclipses. I found this interesting. I will share okay, them. With go, you. Ahead. go ahead. Uh, here's the one that I found least interesting. Number 12, Lady Hawk. Number Boom. 11, The Seventh Sign. Number 10, Pitch Black. Number 9, The Wild Thornberries movie. Number 8, Wolf Creek. Number 7, Lara Croft Tomb Raider. Number 6, Avatar The Way of Water. Number 5, Fantasia. The animated? Yeah, 1940, the animated Fantasia. Oh, I thought it was Which about the that? lady on uh, American <laughs> Idol. <laughs> Go <Sarah> ahead. <laughs> There I love is. her. Very uh, number four, Apocalypto. Uh, I love Apocalypto. <laughs> you have to say it right, Mike. Apocalypto. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Apocalypto. Yes. Uh, I, did you did you ever see Apocalypto? No, no, I haven't seen it. Too too violent for you. I just you know what never came up on my radar. Not my scene. Oh, it is so it. nasty. It is, is it so bad? graphically violent. Oh my god. Now like human sacrifices right there on the screen. I loved it. It was great. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Little yes. Shop of Horrors. And the number one Eclipse movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey. All the way back in 1968, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel's son, Billy, uh, goes to kindergarten with Billy, Kirsten. Billy, 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 Billy. Uh, goes to kindergarten with Kirsten Dunst's son, Enos. And uh, is it Ennis or Enos? How do you spell it? I guess if it was Enos, it would be one N instead yeah. of two. Ennis. Well, you're referring to the uh, the great spinoff to the Dukes of Hazard. Enos was Sonny Schroyer. That's it. Ennis. <laughs> Ennis. An interesting name. Uh, they Ennis. recently, uh, the, the two kids got into a fight. It doesn't sound like it was physical, though. On Jimmy Kimmel Live last week, Jimmy and Kirsten revealed that the boys got into a fight over a chair. The funny thing is each kid told their parents that the other kids stole his chair. Uh, Jimmy said that uh, their sons weren't exactly reliable sources. He added, quote, there was a displacement there, and then they both cried. I'm not yeah, sure. I that's guess a the manufactured was... story. I hope everyone enjoys it. Uh, Kirsten said, quote, uh, they're very sweet boys, and they get along very well. Yeah. So there's that. Okay. Maybe I, I don't buy it. That not for us. 42 million felt that 4.8 uh richter scale earthquake uh that hit the east coast on friday but no one was more shaken than this particular guy his okay. name josh justin allen he's 33 lives in horsham pennsylvania just yeah. outside of philly it's about 40 miles from the epicenter in new york uh actually the epicenter was in new jersey and yes. he happened to be in the middle of a vasectomy oh no no, uh, no, no. He was halfway through the 20-minute surgery uh, when the whole room started to shake. He was awake for the procedure, which is normal. He yeah. thought maybe a, a train went by until his doctor said, is that an earthquake? Just uh, Justin thought that it was uh, a joke at first and that the doctor was trying to lighten the mood because you're awake. Are you, Well, you've had one. Are you awake for your vasectomy? Mike, I've had a dozen of them, and I've always been awake. <laughs> they just can't keep a good man down. 
<laughs> where do they uh, make the first uh, incision when you're having a uh, vasectomy? Where do they put um, it? They put it in the sack. They do all the work in the sack. <laughs> so uh, did it affect the... Uh... I just remember having to wear sweatpants for a long <laughs> gross, time. So gross. It is gross. God. Uh, so did it affect the procedure at all? Well, it looks like Justin might never have kids again. Because the uh, process was successful. Uh, they, they got back to it a few minutes later, and everything went fine. So good yeah. for Justin. Uh, moving right along. Uh, I re- man my, on- my, about the earthquake, I think Saturday Night Live's funniest joke this weekend. They said on uh, this weekend, 42 million people claimed to feel an earthquake. Yeah. <laughs> when it really was nothing. Yeah, exactly. It was uh, nothing. A man on TikTok has a hotel hack. Uh, don't leave your toothbrush out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you don't want the staff using your toothbrush to clean the bathroom. Is this the video that you have? Yeah, we can, we can the, show uh, that video. All right, so um, how did he know? Well, why don't we let him explain exactly yeah. what's going on with the uh, toothbrush being used when he's out of the room to uh, to clean. I will no longer be leaving my toothbrush out. And they use my toothbrush to clean. And they're being nasty to me about it. And they want to offer me a $50 credit and, what did they say, a new toothbrush. They use my toothbrush to clean. And they want to give me a $50 credit and a new toothbrush. Amen. That's it. And I'm saved at the Mandalay Bay. What is the the story about the – wasn't there something about a person that broke in – and then use the toothbrush between two pillows, right? Oh, Wasn't there that's, a story that's like an that? old urban myth. And what they do is they come in and they've obviously been broken into, but the two things that aren't stolen are the toothbrush and their camera. <laughs> and when they, and this goes way back when you had to develop film. And right. when you develop the film, there's uh, a toothbrush <laughs> in a very bad place. Okay. Uh, well, that video you just saw is going viral. So uh, yeah. that's it. And we don't know whether, but it seems well, like, I believe him. Do you believe him? I believe him. I believe that if you're going to do that or have that happen to you, you've done something to deserve it because it's harder to clean with a toothbrush. So you're on the side of people that would use a toothbrush to clean a toilet? I just want the whole story. There you go. And you believe him more than you believe Kirsten Dunst and Jimmy Kimmel about the fake fight between their kids. I believe Kirsten Dunst used that toothbrush to clean her toilet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moving right along. Uh, talk about a Turkish delight. huh? This is the uh, last story today. Okay. Uh, Turkey. This is a big surprise to me. Turkey is the most promiscuous country on the planet. Really? According to an analysis of the world's sexual habits. The average Turk has slept with more than 14 people, according to World Population Review, putting the naughty nation, the naughty nation, well Ooh. above uh, the United States. The average number of sexual partners can vary significantly from country to country, as cultural norms have a significant impact on the number of people someone has sex with. Uh, Turkey's top spot may surprise some, given that more than 99% of residents are Muslim, and the country is widely conceived to have traditional views when it comes to sex and relationships. Uh, the United States scored 13th overall with the World Population Review, saying mm. America's sleep with an average of 10.7 people over the years. Uh, that has us tied with Canada, which also clocked in oh. at the exact same stat. Stop it. The uh, least promiscuous countries in the World Population Review list were China. <laughs> I bet it's not true. I bet China's just not reported a lot, right? Well, they can't have, they're limited to the amount of kids they can have. So they're India. probably keeping it on the DL. India's on the list too. With uh China, me. China and India 3.1 and 3.0 people uh mm. respectively. Here's the uh the list of the top ones uh under Turkey. Uh, coming in with 11.1 average Switzerland, then I won't give you the numbers. Sweden, Italy, Norway, all these Scandinavian countries with those yeah. beautiful ladies. And you'd think oh. it's cold. They need to snuggle. Switzerland, Sweden, Italy, Norway, Finland, South Africa, Iceland. Yes. New Zealand and Australia right behind Turkey as the uh, top spot. So cold. I thought that Bam. Australia would go crazy down there. Yeah, well, they, they I mean, they're they're up there. They're up there on the league. Tie my yeah. kangaroo down, mate. Yeah, you know, that's it. I live from an end down under. Down <laughs> under. Get it? Uh, we'll take a break. And uh, when we come back, I got, I had a father's moment. 
this past week. I just loved every minute of it. I've got an update on my football playing linebacker son who was really happy about going back to school today. Not. We'll be right back. Let's talk about our friends at Legacy Box. Just like us, you're going to love it. Spring cleaning is upon us, but there is one meaningful box you don't throw away when cleaning out your closet. It's the box filled with your family's videotapes and photos. Preserve them for eternity. Legacy Box makes it easy. Load your Legacy Legacy Box with your old tapes, film, and pictures and send it back. You'll get it back on a thumb drive or on the cloud, ready to watch and easy to share. It's so simple, it's like magic. Preserving your family's heritage is the only way to ensure your legacy is safe for generations. Join over one million families that have trusted Legacy Box. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. People, affordable, and they take care of everything. Thanks to Legacy Box, all of our family's histories can live on with digital clarity and no degradation. Nice. <laughs> Protecting your memories doesn't need to be on your spring cleaning to-do list. Visit LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to shop their $9 tape sale. That's LegacyBox.com slash TMOS to unlock this incredible offer, Legacy Box. We love it. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Uh, We hope you uh, are satisfied by my explanation of the circumstances as we move forward, and we look forward to it. And for everybody that reached out during uh, what was a difficult time for both Rob and myself, we thank you. Now, uh, if you're dissatisfied with Mike said, with what Mike said, it's very easy. All you have to do is at about 3.30 today, go stare at the sky. Absolutely. And, and if you're going to give me hate, please make it vitriolic yeah, so please. that I can you know, share it because that's Apply material. Yourself. And, you know, frankly, the haters didn't give me the kind of material I wanted, uh, you know. And by the way, you know, something along. Let me give you a good example. And right. by the way, uh, you know, he may have lost all that weight, but you can see he'll see his giant breasts. That would be nice. That's the reason. That. That's the reason I'm sticking around. There you go. Exactly. Nice. Uh, Last also, week, uh, we're at, uh, is it Thursday night? It was either Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday night. Carl and right. I, I usually am the one that goes to Michael's uh, practices. I go to most of them, if not all of them. And he's playing Pop Warner football, tackle football. And he's in 12 and under. And he's not going to be even 11 until July. So that's his thing. He uh, He's smaller to a degree uh, mm-hmm. than a lot of the other kids because they're some of them are 11, a lot of them are 12. So he's playing... Uh, with these older kids and he is such a hustling tough little guy and i just love him i i love his can do approach the kid the kid just likes to get things done and i i'm just proud of him and i love him and the sweetness but as a sports guy and Rob, I know you're not totally into sports. You know that I am. I like sports. Yeah, I like and watching I, my sports. Kids were in sports. Both of them. Your did kids were both sports. in sports, but oh. you, you, and you were a wonderful, supportive dad, especially with uh with Robert's basketball. Yes. Yeah. But I, I live it, and I relate to it, and I, I love hockey, and I love baseball, and I love football. We're sitting in the bleachers. We've got our little bleacher seats have you ever seen these they're fold-out yeah. chairs that have a back on them so you don't have to tank your back while you're sitting they're, in the bleachers they're l-shaped so right. you you anchor it with your ass and then you have like a back pad yeah and uh it works for almost all bleachers except the ones at my kids uh field on the other side that are tilted <laughs> back where we could tip over the whole thing if we put our, our back it's, anyway. like, it's, it's like when they say on a piece of clothing one size fits most yes <laughs> Louis Anderson comes to mind. What's this one size fit all fits all stuff? Um, so we're sitting there, Carl and I, and we're there at the beginning. Michael, we dropped Michael off a little early. Never, never late for a practice. Always there. Always punctual, which I'm proud of. And right. the coach uh, is walking in. Coach uh, Josiah, really great. Oh, the kind of guy that combines the toughness with the fairness. And was he uh, a character in Godspell? I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, Josiah sounds like a biblical name. Well, you, you, you'll have to check with your, uh, you know, your musical theater club. Uh, you know, where are you we watching this? Well, if this isn't typical, Rob, as we're talking about the business of the show over the weekend. And uh, I said, Rob, did I catch you doing anything? Nope. Just watching A Star is Born with Barbara Streisand. Had never seen it. 
There you go. It was okay. a great day to check it off the list. You know That's what, Mike? Right. Yeah. Not bad. Thanks, Nathan Lane. I appreciate that. Um, so we're sitting there, and Coach Desai comes in. He's a stocky guy, and he's a tough guy. He's got this big black beard, and he's just cool. And he's walking in, and I and and he walks by, and I'm like, Coach Josiah, give him a big thumbs up. And he looks over to me, unsolicited. Carl and I are sitting there, and he said, "Your son is a beast." And wow. Rob, you can say a lot of things about my kid. I almost got emotional. Yes, this might be the wrong thing to get excited about, but when a head coach yeah. says that about your kid, that he's a beast, I almost burst into tears. I was That's so incredible. Your kind of son is a beast, and he he's tough, and yeah. he's gotten the coach's eye, and this is the first time that this has really happened because he's old enough now where you're starting to see you know, kids stand out for uh, yeah. varying reasons. And then to uh, cap a very good football week, uh, they won their game 13 to nothing on Saturday, which is the best thing in the wow. world. I'm so sorry. Oh, Perfect. I was all in. It was so much fun. I got there a little too early and stayed. And uh, Day break. The, uh, he's, he's got a noon game, and I had to drop him off at 1030. And right. I just decided I'd stay. Because uh, Carla was working, as usual. Work, 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 work. Yeah. Someone has to support me. Uh, and anyway, she is uh, making her way there. And I'm watching the eight and under. And this is where the, the curmudgeon old man yes. meets the father of a 10-year-old, which I'm okay. an older dad. I know I'm an older dad. And I'm watching the 8U. And there was a guy on the bleacher next to me who was watching his son somewhere, you know, eight or seven years old, play football, and his other, his other 35 children were using the bleachers as a jungle gym. I and hate that. It, oh. it was that, you know, it was the clank, 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 yeah. clank, yeah. clank, clank. And the kid looked to be about two, and he's got the two snot, you know, yes. that, uh, there. Uh. And he's coming up to me. And he's just staring at me and, uh, I'm, I'm kind of grinning at him, but at the same time, it's like, I, I had no dog in the fight whatsoever, A but public service message to all people, including certain people in my family yes. that share my name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wash your children, wash them, wash Please. them wash your children and get the Kleenex. Out. Yes. So that's yeah, it. And, anyway. That's it. Yeah, wash your children, wash your children. And, uh, by the way, uh, congratulations to the Mustangs, a big victory over uh, Port Charlotte, uh, 13 to nothing was the uh, final score. My son, one fumble recovery way to go. The beast, or as he's referred to on his team, big O. <laughs> I love it. It's awesome. It's the truth. We'll be right back. Did you know that 80% of men will experience hair thinning in their lifetime? Get ahead of it with Nutrafol, a clinically tested hair growth supplement for men. Take their hair wellness quiz at Nutrafol.com slash men for a personalized hair health plan based on your specific root causes. Free shipping and automated deliveries ensure you'll never miss a day. You'll see results in three to six months. We have seen it work. This makes me sad. Got to be realistic. Makes me sad that our guy that was uh, the, the, you know, the endorser for this product no longer with us. It's a bummer, but it's the real. You know, it's, it's not related thing. to the client, though. No, it is not. No, not at all. Should have maybe not mentioned that, but I'm not professional that way. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter, <laughs> enter the promo code TMOS or TMOS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hair stylists uh, recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. That's N U T R A. F O L dot com slash men and enter promo code TMOS. That's neutrafol dot com slash men promo code uh, TMOS. Uh, well, well, well. All right. I guess we have to, you know, this is the only day we'll have it. So we have to talk about the uh, the eclipse. Right. Uh, where is you, you said you've got a lot of information on it. I have yeah. the uh, the news that had a few things. Where is the best place to see it? Oh, can I just say before you start? Yeah. 
when we were the last time there was one of these eclipses, Carl and I were on Route 95, the yeah. super highway that goes from Maine all the way down to the tip of Florida, just mm -hmm. the tip. And we were in South Carolina. Yes. We were using Waze. It was the worst traffic jam I have ever seen on that mm -hmm. slab of highway. We diverted to some tobacco country in South Carolina. It was horrific. And I know that there are going to be areas that uh, traffic comes to a standstill right now. And also, I don't want to alarm anybody, but on this particular day, if the aliens are going to attack, <laughs> they're going to do it during an eclipse. So, Oh, Mike, it's that. much worse than that. It's right. the rapture. I mean, we've had an earthquake. Now the eclipse is going to happen, and we're all going to be taken to God. Well, okay. the good people are, and I guess we'll still be here to do the show. Oh, no. Oh, there he is. Look at that. There he is. I can't believe it. We waited for him all the time, and he's here. And, uh, oh, what's he doing? He's got a stick of gun. Whoa. This blew us up. Sorry, and now it's going to get loud, and I have to turn it off. That, something's never changed. Thank you. Mike, uh, the last eclipse, I was on the Eastern Shore, and I have a great picture of my kids and my niece and my nephew sitting on the deck in direct sunlight with their glasses staring at the sun, and they look miserable. Is so, this one going to be, can you, this is you're, every 20 year you're, you're a little more into it than I am. Can you give us, uh, uh, <laughs> this is, this is the... What will be obscuring? Is it the Earth? Is it the Moon? What it's an eclipse what's... happens, Mike, when the Sun and the Moon and the Earth line up in a line. Okay, and right. the the path of totality, uh, I think, goes a lot of it through Ohio, and I, that's I when it's going to get really dark, right? That well, to be fair, also Buffalo, but to be fair, in the Washington D.C. area in which I live, he's on the list. Um, eighty, I know, <laughs> he's he's a big starer. Right. Um, yeah. uh, in Washington, D.C., we're going to have 87 percent coverage. That's significant, right? That's very big. So are if you, you doing anything it, for it? Are you planning on, uh, you know, going if outside it gets and... dark? I might go outside to look at it. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's probably I've, not, though. I've seen them. I mean, it gets dark and then it gets light. And I'm not going to change. Schools are out in some places. I'm not going to change my day because right. of it. Now, Mike, it's funny you mention it because I have some warnings from the uh, Buffalo Chamber of Commerce okay. about what to do during the eclipse. Right. Plan ahead. <laughs> this right. gets stupider and stupider. Choose your route now and leave for your eclipse spot extra early. It seems this like is... we have a... Uh, hold on, Rob. I think we've got a phone call coming in. Oh, right we do? Now. Yeah. Up. yeah. Pick up. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Rob. Oh, uh, it's, how are uh... you? It's the former president, soon to be the next president. I understand. Um, I just want to tell everyone, enjoy your eclipse. Uh, you don't need those pesky uh, paper glasses or the, uh, the the eclipse watches. Just look directly at the sun. I remember there was a photo of you staring at the sun during your presidency. And my vision is perfect. Nothing happened. Uh, I, 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 look, I think that everybody should enjoy it. It's a cheap ruse, scam con to get people to buy these products you don't need to just stare at the sun and enjoy your eclipse i you know that's odd because my eclipse glasses are trump brand eclipse glasses and they're made in china <laughs> thank you mr president this is my favorite thing from buffalo mike they say when you're traveling to your eclipse spot don't drive with your eclipse viewing glasses on <laughs> god Oh my God! Keep really? your eyes on the road, not the sky. If you're yeah. driving, make sure All you right. do that. Turn your headlights on if it gets dark. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, duh. Mike. This is where it gets ridiculous. Make sure you fill your tank. <laughs> well, hey, hold on though. If you were on that 95, I am sure that the traffic jam was well over two hours. Well over two hours. And so I get it. They're saying for people that might be involved in it because aren't they driving? from uh like 70 percent zones to 86 yeah, percent or 90 yeah. percent where where did you say it's going to be 90 percent ohio 
No, uh, Ohio and Buffalo are actually the path of totality. It'll be in the high 80% in Washington. Oh, high 80%. Yeah. No, I'm not driving three hours for 80%. You'd Mike, have to go over 90 for me. But you have 65% coverage just from your house. Does that mean Does that mean that somewhere in the world there will be over 90%? Yeah, that's the path Somewhere of outside of the United States? That's, when, that's 100%. Okay. The path of totality. All That's right. the picture you always see. That you know, you're like getting the wide. path of totality when you wave your arms up because you're blocking your light. Oh, sorry. It actually did. Did you notice that? That it did that? <laughs> you know what, Mike? I could do an eclipse with my head and my ring light. Maybe. <laughs> you could. You could. So somewhere in the world, there will be a town or a location where yeah. it will, or it might be over the ocean. Right? No, no. Or it'll be 100%. Mike, there's a map. You can see it. It's easy. It's a strip that goes like from Buffalo through Ohio, I think, down to Texas. That's the United States, but I'm saying in the world. No, this is the place. Really? Yeah, because everything oh. has to be lined up. Oh, and it's also, it's not, okay, I get it. I'm sounding, you have to, I'm sorry. Mike, I'll on shut the, up Mike, on the bright side, on the other side of the world, there will be total darkness, but that's because it's nighttime. Oh, I'm an idiot. All right. Uh, well, not everywhere. Oh, shut up, Mike. Don't talk. I'm not allowed to talk about the eclipse anymore. Put on your I glasses. Put on I'm your glasses. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I do not know what I'm talking about. Oh, and about. prepare your car with a blanket and a flashlight. Yeah, so you can sit on the hood. And if it's chilly, you can warm your butt in the engine. I'm done talking about the eclipse. I don't think I'll ever talk about one again. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, fuel your peak performance with 4 Wellness, the ultimate functional food brand. 4 Wellness was founded by Phil Mickelson and renowned performance coach Dave Phillips. Dave Phillips. It's a game-changing performance coffee supplement. You can elevate your brew with just one scoop or enhance focus, reduced... Enhanced. How about enhanced? That's good. Enhanced focus, reduce caffeine jitters, increase collagen and fat burning support. For wellness makes it easy to integrate high quality functional ingredients into your daily routine. Plus, with a risk free 60 day money back guarantee, what do you got to lose? Unleash your full potential with Four Wellness because your body and mind deserve the best. If you drink coffee, it's time to give Four Wellness a try. Head to fourwellness.com slash TMOS and use code TMOS for 25% off your order. Again, that's fourwellness.com slash TMOS for 25% off and make sure you use our promo code TMOS so they know that we sent you. Hello. And don't forget Mike's TED Talk on the Eclipse will go live today at 3 p.m. Very, so very exciting. I'll tell you all, all the, the details, details. All the deets you need to know. Absolutely. Let's start today with something that is, um, it's, it's not a fun topic, but it's something that means a lot to me and it's very serious. And that is the topic of suicide. I think a lot of people have been touched by it. And it's really when one person commits suicide, it affects so many people. And today marks the 30th anniversary of Kurt Cobain killing himself from Nirvana. 30 years ago. Wow. I know, right? Yeah, and uh, right. I think a lot of people like myself learned about it on MTV. Hi, I'm Kurt Loder with an MTV News special report on a very sad day. Kurt Cobain, the leader of one of rock's most gifted and promising bands, Nirvana, is dead. And this is the story as we know it so far. Cobain's body was found in a house in Seattle on Friday morning. He was dead of an apparently self-inflicted shotgun blast to the head. Police found what is said to be a suicide note at the scene, but have not yet divulged its contents. Cobain, who was 27, had reportedly been missing for about six days, according to his mother. And I think um, that was a... It could have been a turning point in being aware of this going on. I know the suicides happened before that, but that was a big one. And I just want to tell anyone, if you're having any sort of thoughts, any sort of doubts, anything that leads you in that direction, please pick up your phone and dial 988. People are there to listen to you. Amen. Way Don't to do that. Um, all right. Moving on to something a little lighthearted now. Uh, remember the song by the Scorpions, Rock You Like a Hurricane? Rock you like a hurricane. Great yeah. record. Hair metal. But when they brought it to their record company, it wasn't called Rock You Like a Hurricane. It was called F You Like a Hurricane. Except oh, it had the really? word. Yeah, so imagine. Like I'm going to do you like a hurricane. Yeah. Imagine this on your radio. You like a hurricane. 
Same exact song with the F yep. word. Yeah. I'd never heard it. Wow. Do you think TK would have played that? Hey, TK, TK, Tom Kent. I'd love to hear it, like, uncensored. I would, too. If, I would if you too. can find that for the bonus show, that would be so cool. If you could find I would love to play that. Maybe I'll just reconstruct it with my lead vocal. <laughs> just you doing that? That would yeah. be awesome. We will do that. Um, I love the comic Sebastian Maniscalco, and he brings up something. I've not heard of this before, but it doesn't surprise me. Have you paid a COVID fee at a restaurant yet? Never, never All in right. my life. Is this a New York thing? I guess, but here he is talking about it. Went to a restaurant last night and I got the bill and they charged me a COVID fee. And I asked the guy, I go, what's the COVID fee? He goes, yeah, well, we got to wipe down the menus. <laughs> wipe down the menus. You're charging $3 to wipe down your own menus. Before COVID, what? You just brought out the menu with spaghetti sauce on it? Eliminate the COVID fee. And they charged me three and a half percent credit card fee because i was using the credit card it's a bad look absorb the fee it's called the cost of doing business it ain't right you get a menu of spaghetti now that's sebastian like on a show right because that's certainly not no, that's not him sebastian. on stage that's, that that's low me. energy comedian on show energy which i hate when i hear that Mike, it's really even do. lower it's uh low energy on tiktok comic TikTok, so he's just doing a uh, social, and he's out there. Uh, if you told me he had recorded it under a blanket, I would have believed you. Yeah. But it is a valid thought. That so, you're well, paying I'm going to give him credit that that's just his personal little thing that he's throwing out there, and maybe he brings it a little bit when he goes on a radio show. Maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I hope so. He's got okay. one of the longest names, so I give Sebastian him credit. Sebastian Manikowskos, though. Um, South Carolina beats Iowa. I'm going to send some condolences out to our buddies in Iowa because mm -hmm. they got so close. And they had J K J K J K K H T K. Thank you. Six, 1630. Uh, the mighty AM 1630. But with Caitlin Clark, a young lady who has really reinvented the game and Did made you see it. Post, by the way, did you see when he he uh, hope everything? He said something that concerned me. Where you talk to him, right? Yeah, he's okay. Is he's he okay? okay. Do you talk him off the ledge? Or yeah, what? I, I said everything's gonna be a okay, and then he oh, had, I know what he said. No matter what happens, we thanks for right. Did you see the one I'm talking I about? I did not see that. <laughs> no matter what happens, thanks for the joy. That's exactly. I literally have committed it to memory. You need to call him. What did you say to him? What I, in the name I, of God that had did you to be, say to him? That had to be before we spoke. Because no, I think it was afterwards. My God. So well, take his temperature again. He is 95 years old. Yeah, uh, but uh, sending uh, our love out to the people of Iowa. Uh, so sad that they have Caitlin Clark, this amazing player, and they just couldn't win the final game. They lost to South Carolina. Perfection with a touch of sweet redemption. Undefeated South Carolina has won its third national championship 87 75 the final but i think caitlin clark's gonna be okay i think she'll do all right does oz think that was a little loud that audio uh wait mike it's nothing if not correctable Okay, just checking. Okay. You know, okay. I'm just uh, I'm just paying attention to the uh, to the deets. You know, All right, I understand, and it's a good day the, to do it. And let's close with this. Was that right? with the, that was the men's uh, no team right there? ladies? Oh, ladies, the Gamecocks, which PC, by uh, the way seems to me, oh, guys, they were getting more attention on the girls' basketball. NCAA well, I mean, the, the, because they've got that superstar yeah, on Caitlin Iowa, Clark. yeah, and uh, that was the that was the biggie. I was uh, yeah. I, I wish I paid more attention to basketball. Sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, Men's Robert, championship tonight, right? Yes, and okay. uh, Robert has UConn, I believe. I think they, it's a, what he wants to win because that was okay. I, I, he had few missteps in his bracket along the way, but he picked them from the word go. If right. I have that wrong, send all emails to me. Uh, Saturday Night Live had Kristen Wiig on this week. Uh, it was a good medium effort. She put on the uh, five timer hosting jacket. Ugh. 
Saw that but, sketch. Yeah. I, but Mike, they I did hate have, that when they're self congratulatory that way. I hate it. Well, I'll tell you the problem with it is they always use that to trot out other five timers. Yeah, well, they, that, they weren't this time. They were just random people. They weren't five timers. And if you put five timers in the opening sketch or surprise casting in the opening sketch, you can't put them in the rest of the show yeah. and expect it to be a surprise. Exactly. So don't do it. Right. Uh, but they did have one piece of insight. We've been talking a lot about airlines lately and how they've been falling apart. United Airlines had to recall a flight this week. A United Airlines flight from Germany was forced to return to the airport after the toilet broke and leaked into the cabin. Though it's the perfect punishment for people who take their shoes off on planes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, there's a good bonus though for those that, uh, that those of us that were Birkenstocks were just get edged. So nasty, nasty, nasty. Hey, that's it. Uh, we got to get out of here. Uh, thank you for all your concern. Thank you for all the messages, all the notes, and uh, hopefully. You understand what's going on ever forward. We look forward to joining you for a brand new episode tomorrow on the Mike O'Mara Show. For Rob Spiewak and the Incredible Oz, this is Mike O'Mara saying so long, everybody. Happy Eclipse, everybody. Check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You are a blabber! Do you ever have Egg McMuffin? Sometimes, Dad, or cheese printed. Can you say Egg McMuffin? Egg McMuffin, yeah. Right. So what do you want now? Well, if I have to teach you how to be a reporter, I'll do that later. <laughs> <laughs>